Welcome back to the Data Blitz Podcast. I'm Noel. I'm Brendan. I'm Dave. All right, so we are back with what may very well be our last regular episode here. Um, we are effectively splitting into four different podcasts, covering different sports. Um, we're kind of building out the infrastructure for that right now. But we're going to be having uh, a football podcast like we kind of were, uh, NBA podcast, you know, led by Dave, like we've kind of transitioned into uh, a golf podcast where Brendan here is going to lead the way talking about latest golf news and stuff like that. Just kind of being our expert there. And if you guys listened to that NHL preview a while back, uh, we had an NHL expert come on. He's going to be taking over the NHL podcast and now data blitz effectively for podcasts. Exciting stuff. Yes, sir. Um, also rebuilding the website to kind of allow for people to subscribe to different sports. So if you, you know, if you're particularly interested in what Dave has to say about basketball, you can go ahead and follow basketball on the data Blitz website and uh, you'll be able to get every article, every uh, video and every podcast kind of delivered right to your inbox from there. So that's going to be really awesome and something great to have. Yeah. Uh, all our content's going to be much more accessible. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to kind of, filter out what you want to hear and what you don't. So um, that's what you have to look forward to. Um, I'm pretty excited to be able to do this. So hope you guys are as well. Yeah, we got some big brains working behind the scenes here. Yeah, it's a lot of work and going in. ready it. to go. Yes, We are sir. very excited. Um, so as he, as he pushes in his glasses. <laughs> well, these glasses are just for show. They don't fucking do shit. No nah, man, uh, fake, fake prescription. Yeah, it's very exciting stuff. I think we've we've been trying to kind of throw a, we've been growing the podcast, but trying to throw a lot of stuff and different topics in, um, and that kind of leads to us, you know, maybe not always giving, uh, like a real curated set of ideas and, and a particular topic every day. Might throw a couple of things in, but that's really going to change with this change coming up. Uh, and then you know we're also going to have the people that are a little bit more expert covering those topics that they care a little bit more about. Uh, so those of us like me, who I'm not the biggest NBA fan in the world, I try my best to keep up with it, but you know, I just don't have that natural inclination like Dave has, and he just knows so much more than me. So it's just like, it, it's not even a question. You do have, so, the, you have the spicy takes though. So I'll give I you do. The, the, you the do takes so I think of, a, the lack of knowledge helps definitely with the spicy takes. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's my superpower. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, with that, I think this is going to be our last regular episode. We'll post the first couple episodes that we have into this kind of feed here. So if you guys are interested in checking those out, you know, check back here. We'll link over to the other podcasts there. Um, so I think that's the way it's going to be done. You'll be sure to find those here, though. All right. So with that kind of administration stuff out of the way, we can jump over into the NBA playoffs. Let's do it, baby. Uh, All right, so we got the Celtics and the Cavs playing right now. Uh, a little bit different when, than when I last checked right before we started this. But, you know, we have Donovan Mitchell out, Jared Allen out, and Marcus Morris is putting up an absolute show right now. How's this one going, boys? Um, You know, it's a lot tighter than we want it to be. But... Uh... Was that Al Horford who just made a three? So we're up, we're up nine. Um, you know, the, we expect the Celtics to just handle business, and they kind of have in the series. But it would be a little more encouraging to see them, you know, win by a good margin. <laughs> um, I'm personally a little bit worried about what's going to happen um, if slash when they make it to the NBA Finals. Um, if they face the Nuggets and the Timberwolves, I'm a little scared. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think tonight's going a little bit better, I'd say, than it was going. Um, game four, it's a very small little because this is still a pretty heavily contested game. Um, it does seem like the Celtics are putting together decent offense here at the end of the game. Uh, good defense as well, too. But just seems like whenever they play uh, role players especially, um, they just – 
stoop down to the level of their competition. Um, I think that plays a factor in it. And then it's also just them not really playing their best games. It seems like they always play very different to the normal offense they play when everyone's healthy and they're doing what they're supposed to do. And naturally, Brazingis being out uh, is a big factor in that as well, too. But, um, I, you know, they're doing it. I know Tatum just hit a pretty big three here. I think they put him up by 14. So um, I think they might pull away with this, go into the next round. And then it's going to be interesting to see what they do in the Eastern Conference final. It's, you know, still got some work left to be done before they can even go to the finals. Yeah. Uh, this team kind of reminds me, and, and you guys might know better than I do. I think we've seen a couple teams that have come into the playoffs and just steamrolled their competition for the most part, but haven't had a ton of experience in clutch minutes. And I know the Celtics were like that. Uh, I believe it was two years ago where there was a very limited amount of clutch minute time, uh, ended up kind of working out and they made it to the finals against Golden State. But, uh, I'm a little bit concerned for that specific element you know we have anthony edwards who's a guy that is just one of the best players in the clutch same with Jokic, uh on two of the potential teams that we're going to face uh and then you have luca and you have shea so almost every team in the west has an elite clutch player and that's not to say that jalen brown jason tatum aren't clutch players but i i think that that's somewhere that the celtics really need to you know buckle up and and get prepared for because We've seen them struggle. We've seen them fall apart late in games. Uh, and even this year, like when they've been so dominant, it, it's that's what kind of is their biggest downfall. So I'm that's the one thing that I'm concerned about going forward here. Yeah, I mean, um, I think a big thing, especially with them losing Marcus Smart in the offseason, um, I know a very big question going into this season was whose team is it now? Um, and obviously it is. Uh, you do have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown being the two best players on the team, and it seems like they've both embraced the idea of them uh, co-facilitating leadership on the team. Um, just with their split personalities, they are very different. Um, they like to do the whole fire and ice thing in regards to their personalities. So I, I'm fine with them doing that and splitting up their responsibilities and saying that either one of us can kick it up a notch um, any given night. But they actually need to start doing that. And I think especially at this portion where you're starting to get out of the second round of the playoffs and maybe move up to the Eastern Conference Finals now, uh, you need to see your two best players play games like they're the two best players on the team. I think Derek White was phenomenal in the first round. He hasn't been as good the second round. Obviously, Porzingis hasn't been uh, playing a single game. So it's just I, I think they need to, to get that sorted out before they can do anything too, too crazy. Mm-hmm. So you guys want to jump over into Pacers Knicks? Yeah. Yeah. Um... You know, some fun stuff going on in that series. Um, the Knicks took the game, what was that, last night, um, by a big margin. Um, you know, we kind of thought the Knicks were the better team, and then we had some doubts that maybe, hey, they have some injuries, and that maybe this team just doesn't have enough depth and that they're playing too many minutes. Um, but, you know... At the end of the day, this team's got the grit, and the way they match up with the Pacers, I mean, they just have more star power, and it's showing. Um, the Pacers are inexperienced and honestly kind of just a jumbled-up roster of guys. Like, they don't they don't really have a formula for what they're doing. Um, it's kind of just a play-fast and play-defense type of team. So hopefully, you know... Going forward, the Pacers can maybe add that next guy that they need or make some sort of trade because right now they're kind of locked into a pretty solid roster, but a roster that's not going to get it done. Um, I think we see the Knicks take this next game and we see Knicks Celtics, which will be awesome in the conference finals. Yeah, I think uh, I think the Knicks probably finish this series off too. Um, it seems just like Indiana doesn't know how to play um, in New York. They just can't can really get around being in the, the spotlight playing against the Knicks. Um, I think Ty, uh, Hal Burton's aggressiveness 
pay, plays a key factor into that as well too. Um, any game that he puts up, I think twenty five plus shots. I think they're four and one in those games. And any game he does mm-hmm. uh, like less than sixteen. I forget the exact number, but they're like one and four in those games. So really, it you know it is his team. He is the best player on that team, and he needs to assert himself in the game. Um, and that's really the only chance that they have. Uh, competing, especially against the Knicks, who do have Jalen Brunson, who can go off at any given night and uh, put up crazy numbers. So, I think uh, Mip, your point's pretty right about the Pacers. Like, they don't really have a direction that they're going right now, and I think that's because of the Siakam trade. Like, if they didn't go and get him, they probably would have a better identity, a better, you know, way to move forward here, and they could surround Halliburton with players that actually are useful for him. Uh, Siakam's a guy that's just not going to be able to get that done. I think throughout his career, he's he's too one dimensional. He's not the best shooter. Uh, he's you know a decent defender, but I think if you're looking for that one B, I mean we've and we've talked about how the Pacers are kind of a team built of one Bs, and they just got another one, honestly like a one C or even a, like a two. Uh, style player in Siakam, a guy that's just not going to be able to lead a team, not really able to show up in clutch time. Uh, a really good regular season player, but I think when it comes down to the playoffs, Siakam is very much limiting this team. I like Halliburton's play style, and I like some of the players that they do surround him with, uh, but you know that lack of identity is really going to hurt them going forward, and it's not just this year that it's going to hurt. Yeah, and I think Siakam if you're going to comp him to like another player on another team, I would say he's kind of like the Chris Middleton of this team, right? Like he shows up some games, some games he doesn't. Sometimes it's just like, how does he factor in? Um, To me, it's just like, can, can the Pacers play the style of basketball, which is this fast pace, like get up and down the court with a guy who is not fast. He's not fast. So, what are you supposed to do? Um, to me, he belongs on a team like the Knicks, a team that is more methodical. Um, so, you know, this lack of identity, like you said, it's it's a problem for them. And I'm sure I'm sure Dave's going to disagree with me here, but I'm not a Siakam fan, and that it just is what it is. Uh, I think he's a great third option. Um. I don't wholeheartedly disagree with you, to be completely honest. I, I do see your point where you can kind of think that Siakam is kind of a Chris Middleton type player, um, where it is kind of inconsistencies inconsistencies that you do get out of him. The only thing with Chris Middleton is that he happens to play with the honest intent of Um yeah. So he has the benefit of the doubt of being able to have inconsistent nights and not really needing to put up great performances. And I mean, Hal Burton is a great player, but he is very young. Um, and he also is a guard at the end of the day. And I think guards can only do so much if they're not really starting to go into their prime. Anthony Edwards doesn't count in what I just said. I'm taking all that back. Um, but besides that, you know, uh, the Pacers, they just they don't have the star power really to win. And it's not even that they need a crazy, crazy talent on their team because they do have a great team. But, um, I mean... You know, you got Obi Toppin, TJ McConnell, and those those are the guys you're bringing out into the slug fight every single night. I don't really think that's going to get them by. Um, even if they do make it past the Knicks, somehow win these last two games, um, they're going to get clapped by the Celtics. Uh, and then going into next year too, I don't. The East is going to be interesting to see how it plays out next year. But um, I, you, you got to think that they're on a pretty good run so far, and see if they can recreate it next year too. Yeah, and I think to your point about Halliburton, um, yeah, he's young and he's limited maybe a little bit by being a guard, but I think he's more so limited by the fact that he's like a pass first, he's a point guard player. Um, I think what we kind of see in the modern day NBA is that the point guards are typically not your best player anymore. So, you know, I mean, there's teams like the Knicks who have Jalen Brunson, but he's a scorer, Mm -hmm. right? Like... He's more so a shooting guard. Steph Curry, um, score. Yeah, like that's that's the type of archetype that you're looking for in your best player if he's a point guard. Um, so, yeah, to me, they're still just they're lacking their number one guy. Um, and I think Miles Turner is a great guy to hang on to as well. But how long are you going to hang on to him, right? Like at some point, like you got to make some sort of change for either like value. Or, 
just like grabbing other guys or picks, whatever it may be. But I think they need a big change, and I think a big change is something that could really benefit them. But, you know, at the same time, it could absolutely fuck them. So that's all I got for uh, the Pacers. I have a yeah, to your point, Miles Turner, too. Oh, sorry, no, I'm just going to ask you real ahead. quick. Uh, to the point of Miles Turner, I do think he's also like three years past his prime in terms of like when you wanted to trade him if you're the Pacers to do anything about it. So now you just kind of have him on your team. And I'm sure they can still get rid of him and probably get something back. But um, they, they lost like that peak return, I think, two, three years ago you could have had for him. Um, they, you know, they tried to ride it out with him, build around, not build around him, but build a team with him. Um, and they're doing good, obviously. You know, they made it a second round in the playoffs. They had a really good year this year. But um, can you do you think he's going to be part of your team going forward and getting better than what you are right now? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I was just going to throw out, like, I don't know if they necessarily need a one, a player better than Halliburton on the team, but if they had somebody at that same caliber that was kind of a stretch for the defensive-minded playmaker, which I think what they kind of tried to go for with Siakam, but he's just not that guy for them. But, you know, they kind of need to spread the, spread the floor out, and give uh, Halliburton an option for shooting, shore up that defense, and then have kind of another guy that can make plays um, kind of down low, but also, you know, with his size. And I, I think Halliburton's only going to be able to go as far as the team around him is going to carry him, but like kind of the best shooter beside him. And because he's a guard, you might not want to surround him with a shooting guard. Um, but I think some somebody that might be able to have a little bit of size, have a little bit of shooting would be that guy. I think that's exactly what they went for, but they just kind of missed the mark. Yeah, I don't think Siakam will ever, ever win another championship unless he's absolutely carried. Um, And if he does, I'll get his face tattooed on my ass, all right? But um, (laughs) I'm going to hold you to that because there's still a chance he might win a championship. He's got a a few years left on on him. Fuck. (laughs) Um, No, but yeah, I mean – your point, Dave, about Miles Turner, I think is accurate. I think, Noel, you're right about, you know, Siakam was missing the mark for the Pacers. Um, and shooting guard isn't maybe the right addition, but I think for this team it is because Halliburton is not a shoot-first kind of guy. I think mm-hmm. I think you need a scoring guard. I think that's what they desperately mm-hmm. need, and they need some role players, like you said. So that's kind of the roster construction I would personally think to go for. Um, but can't have everything. I think um, they could somehow do it. I think if they could get Brandon Ingram on this team. Yes. That'd be pretty interesting to see. Because I do know he's going to be, you know, he's, his trade market's pretty hot right now. So. Oh, uh, that's just me. That's just me. Dave's here in some at the four. Yeah, I listen, man. I think that would, that would that would make them a pretty good team. <laughs> Although Bi has been a little bit inconsistent, um, especially in the playoffs. He was. I already made my points about Brandon in the playoffs. I I was severely disappointed in him on uh, his performance. All right, that's enough on the Pacers. That's uh, that was a lot on the Pacers. <laughs> a lot of the Pacers. We'd like double what we talked about the Celtics about the Pacers. Uh, you guys want to Indiana jump over? fans if you're listening. Be happy. Yeah, we represent. Uh, Thunder Mavs. Yeah, this is a fun series. Um, so they play again tonight, game five, kind of pivotal game here. Um, Thunder were able to grab one the other night, and I think we're seeing maybe a little bit of a shift in this series. Um, you know, we just saw like just a real solid defensive game. Um, you know, they barely snaked it out at the end, but what I personally saw was Chet showed up a little bit better than he had in previous games. Um, I kind of hinted at this during our last podcast and it was like, well, Chet doesn't really belong in the paint against the Mavericks. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, he had a pretty fucking good game. Um, you know, SGA did his thing as he should, and when he does, it keeps him in the game. Um, 
But we did see very disappointing performance from Kyrie. Luca didn't really take over instead. And there's some injury concerns with Luca. So anything can happen in this series. And if anything, this could give the Thunder just more confidence going down the stretch into potentially the conference finals. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been pretty evident throughout this series that Luca just isn't really playing at the level that he's supposed to be. Um, not even supposed to be, but they're just kind of the level the team needs him to be playing on in order to be a winning team. And they have won two games. Um, and I think those two games that they won have been more so a reflection of the Thunder not playing well rather than the Mavericks just kind of blowing them out of the water. So um, I I think, you know, if Shai does what he does and he puts up 30-plus a game and he can get – for the people on his team to put up 15 plus, you know, they're going to win that game. And that's kind of how they've been getting their two wins. Um, if the team kind of clicks, then they'll be good to go. They don't need anyone to, they don't need like a second person putting up 30 of shots up the one putting up 30. Um, and he's going to be, you know, passing, spreading the rock around. So uh, if Luca can't step up and play to that kind of caliber, I don't see them winning this series. Uh, I will give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he does have, you know, some injury uh, concerns, like you said, in the, um, so I'm sure that could probably be uh, hindering his performance as well too. But um, you know, Kyrie also needs to step a little, up a little bit too. He's been he was he's doing good. You know, he was good last series. I think he's had a pretty good playoffs overall. He's been distributing pretty well. Um, but this team isn't built to have anyone else besides those two carry the workload. Um, you can you got the defensive players. You got PJ Washington. He'll do what he can do. For you, uh, Gafford down low, Lively down low, you know they can do, they'll do what they can do, but they're never going to be your one, two, or potential. You're going to have a half, going to have to have a three, but um, you don't want to have or have to depend on one of those three guys or anyone else on the team, to be completely honest. Yeah, and I thought, you know, going into the series that Luca was going to be the guy and everybody else was going to be trying to catch up with him, and that just hasn't been the case so far. Um, the Thunder, are a way better uh, rounded team. You know, they just have so many weapons all over the place, and uh, the Mavs are a little bit more shallow. I mean, it's it's good that PJ Washington has decided to show up and kind of be a different player than he was in the regular season. Like I said, I think last episode, but um, between Kyrie and Luca, I mean, we need them to show more star power than the Thunder have uh, combined. I mean, otherwise, they're not going anywhere. You know, I mean, I don't know. It's disappointing. I the the team like I said, the team really just was constructed around how far can two guys carry you. Um, mm-hmm. So when that doesn't pander out, you know, it's you kind of hit a roadblock, and it happens to be against the number one team in the Western Conference, which was an insane conference this year. So, you know, they are a young team, but um, I don't know how much I like OKC's chances if they do advance from this series. Regardless of they play if they play T Wolves or the Nuggets, um, I think the inexpertise, not for Shy but just for the rest of the team, um, will kind of be exploited a bit more uh, once they hit the Western Conference Finals. They are a very young team, um, and I don't think that their talent is going to be enough to compensate for their uh, inexperience. But um, I think they do make it out of this series with the the Mavericks if they just keep up what they're doing um, and let the Mavericks kind of beat themselves in a way. Yeah, I agree. Um, anything else we want to cover with this series? No, I think we kind of hit it on the head. Um, I think Dave said it perfectly that this team is designed to win with two guys and yeah. – you know, with how loaded the teams at the top are versus how much nothing that the rest of the teams at the bottom have, like these teams are so top heavy that two guys isn't going to get the job done. Um, and a big three like Phoenix wasn't going to get the job done. It's it's a complete team effort this year, and that's what you need to win. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, I think the Mavs are in a lot of trouble, but. Still got games to play. We'll see. All right, let's move on to the exciting series, in my opinion. Yeah. Two minutes. Best for last. Yeah. yeah. So, 
Nuggets won their third straight. A um, little bit of a panic now for the T Wolves. Um, a lot of hate going around to Rudy Gobert, which I'm here for. But um, do you love Rudy Gobert? He hatred. actually had hatred. He had <laughs> he had the uh, best plus minus on the team in this past game, which is interesting. But um, what I kind of want to point out here is the Nuggets just played an exceptional game. Um, they did everything they needed to do. I thought that the T-Wolves did a really good job of guarding Jamal Murray and guarding Michael Porter Jr., but they failed to do anything about Aaron Gordon and obviously Jokic with his 40, 13, and 7. Yeah. 13 assists, 7 rebounds. Um, Jokic was just efficient as fuck. Like, that's all that's all there's really to say about this. Guy scores 40 points and he misses what is that? Seven shots? Like it's crazy. what are you gonna do? Um Nuggets <laughs> shot 47% from three to the Timberwolves 30. There's another gap in your in your game. Um turnovers were 14 to 11 in favor of the Nuggets. So Nuggets really just dominated this game. It was close for like the first half and then Nuggets just pulled away. Um, personally, I think that the Timberwolves can win this series still. It's just they're going to have to make some adjustments. And the big troubling thing for me is how does Anthony Edwards kind of adjust to how often he's being double teamed? Because it's a real problem for him right now. Um, they don't really have that other guy who can create his own shot. Like Cat is very adept at like driving and gathering rebounds, but they're kind of struggling to find another guy who can create buckets when they need them. Yeah. I think this is a, this series is exciting and I do see why people say it is exciting, but I think it's also kind of a cut and dry um, series to me as well too. The first two games, they really took the Nuggets by surprise. I think they're a little lackluster, um, a little shell shocked. You know, they didn't really know what they were getting into against that Timberwolves team. Um, they didn't, you know, see the intensity that they'd bring. Obviously, and I think I think they did catch them kind of sleeping those first two games. Um, obviously, the Nuggets took a little momentum back on that game three. They got a game back on that one, but I think the series kind of ended game four. To be completely honest with you, just because. The T Wolves and I. Whenever I watch the Timberwolves, I always think that they are only as good as Anthony Edwards is, um, because they do have a great defensive team. But I personally just don't rate Cat on offense um, at all. I think you know he can have good offensive games. I don't think he's a number two offensive scorer on any given team in the NBA. Um, in terms of teams who can compete for a championship, just because he's so on and off, and I think that kind of affected them a lot. But once Anthony Edwards put up 44 points and the Nuggets still found a way to win that game, I think that was kind of the nail in the coffin for them. Um, and you saw it in game five where uh, Jokic just kind of came out firing. Obviously, he had his 40, super efficient 40. And then Anthony Edwards had 18 points. You know, they, they strapped him up and they lost that game pretty handedly um, just because of Anthony Edwards is putting up 40 points for you and you're still losing that game you're not going to win any other game in that series because they figured you out and you can't do better than they can. Uh, that's just my opinion on this series. You know, the Nuggets are the championship um, favorites for the championship repeat for a reason. And they do have the three-time MVP on their team leading the way. Yeah, I think you're pretty right on. If Anthony Edwards isn't able to carry them past and they're not able to defend Jokic the way they were for the first two games, like, this is not going to... Um, so, I think uh, after the last episode, I was saying Timberwolves maybe have it, uh, but Ant got shut down here, and, and just the rest of the team wasn't really able to make huge strides. I mean, Cat had 23 points, but I don't love what I saw out of the Timberwolves. And then you have the Nuggets, who are just one of the most well-rounded offenses in the league. Um, and if you're not able to slow down Jokic, you're never going to win, so... Two keys, uh, Anthony Edwards needs to get going again, and they need to slow down Jokic and, and try to make other people miss shots, but it's all tough to do because uh, Jokic is such a good facilitator, so we'll see what actually ends up happening there. Yeah, it's a lot to ask out of Anthony Edwards. Dude's 22 years old. Like, yeah. Still super early in his career. Um, so, you know, he's definitely earned his respect, definitely. 
But at the end of the day, one guy in the NBA these days is just not going to get it done on, on his own. So this team needs to help him out offensively. And like you said, you got to stop Jokic somehow while stopping shooters. I don't, mm. I don't know how you do. You have to compete offensively. So I think going forward, yeah, it, it could just be that the Nuggets just win the fourth straight and call it a series. Um, but I think the Timberwolves, I think the Timberwolves will come back and fight. Um, whether they win or not, I have no idea, but I would, I, I would expect Anthony Edwards to go 30 plus in this next game. I think it'll be fun to watch. I don't know if it's going to win the game, but it'd be fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, the, the T Wolves, they just need to, I, they can only, they got the two big men lineup. Um, they don't really just have offensive minded players on their team. Um, and that's just kind of the only crippling thing for them because they were like the best defense in the NBA. And obviously it's great being the best defense, but shame on you that you have to play the fucking three-time MVP who can cook you no matter what your defense is ranked. Um, so it's just a really tough matchup on their part. And, and the Nuggets are a tough matchup for anybody in the league. And I do truly believe that Celtics with a healthy Porzingis is the only chance any team in the NBA has to stop the Nuggets, um, just the way that they're constructed. Because like you said, they have a five-man lineup who can do everything on offense and everything on defense. Maybe Jamal Murray, give or take the defensive aspect of it. But same thing with the Celtics. You have the five men who can do everything on offense and everything on defense. Their issue is consistency and injury uh, health obviously so if those two things align i think the celtics have a very good chance to put it up um and i think that's really the only chance you see the nuggets going down because i do think if okc advances and they have to play and the nuggets advance i think they're clapping either them or the maps it doesn't really matter mm-hmm. all right so when you were gone on i don't know what day do we record this now it was monday um so we had the Hawks take home the number one pick. And when you get our, our resident expert, NBA boy, we need your opinion. What do they do here? Yeah, um, to be completely honest with you, I think they're going to draft that one dude out of France. Um, whatever his Sar, I think his name is. Uh, I don't know shit about this draft, to be honest with you. Um, I looked at the top seven. I saw a graphic for it. I recognized two names, maybe, on it. Yeah. And I was like, who the fuck are these dudes? So I don't think it's going to be a, like a bad draft. I'm sure they will be good NBA players. That's usually how it works out in drafts like this, um, where you don't have to, like, you don't have the expectations to become a bust. So you're probably going to be decent. So I think most most teams are going to be getting decent players that they can add to their team, especially in the top 14. Um, that's usually where you start seeing most of the talent anyways, and you might have one or two. Uh, in the off chance later on in the draft, obviously. But um, the Atlanta Hawks organization is one of the stupidest organizations in all of the NBA, so I can't wait to see how they fuck this up because they have so much that could happen right for them that I think everything is going to go wrong. So I just cannot wait to see what they do in the offseason because I know they're going to fuck up somewhere along the road um, and, and not develop their players, make the wrong trades. I know they have DeJounte and Trey Young. Um, both of them are, they don't know what to do with them. Uh, now they have the first round pick. So they just have so much going on that I think it's going to overwhelm the organization. <laughs> um, and, you know, the top guys, and, and they're just going to fuck something up. I just can't wait to see it. I can totally see that. They traded Luca. They traded Luca. <laughs> <laughs> Very young bro like i mean i don't know i don't know what you want me like they're gonna do something i don't know what it is i'm sure they're gonna probably take so probably i don't think they're back. gonna trade it they'll trade back yeah i do if they trade it back and then that dude turns out i mean that'd be crazy. but it's also uh luke had so much hype coming into the league too trey obviously did as well but you know luke was 16 years old going against nba players mm-hmm. yeah, he was like six seven most of what you need five ten I guess exactly. Yeah, it's like six more, so. uh, I also I just think that the the Hawks like I've made this I think I've talked about this in the past um, when the Hawks are in the playing game, but like they've never had a good constructed team. It's, there's I'll always so many gaps and weaknesses. Bad. I mean, I get well. That's like 2015 though. You said never. Okay, <laughs> let's in the last like since Trey Young's been on the team, we'll we'll go with yeah, that. No, they, they um, suck. Yeah, we'll say modern NBA. Like they just—they've never had a good 
little roster lineup around him. They just can't seem to get the pieces together. And I think that's just a lack of uh, organization knowing what they're doing and how to actually build the team. So I don't think them having the first overall pick is going to really do anything. They're probably going to draft him and still fuck it up somehow. They miss like all their picks. Think about all the picks they've taken. They miss like almost every single one. Uh, I'd, I'd love to see. I'd have to go back to see what they, uh, what their draft history is, but I'm sure it's not good. Let's see. Uh, oh, boy. I'm thinking Okongwu's mid. Jackson Hayes, that was New Orleans. Cam Reddish was a huge miss. Yeah. Um, Herter was okay, but, like, a lot of... It's, it's not a... He's not, like, a nail mover. Yeah, not at all. Um, You're drafting a role player. John Collins, I mean, he's gone now. I thought he was pretty good. It doesn't but... matter. Irrelevant. And then... Schroeder was pretty good, but like not really. I mean, there's like their hits are they, draft, they have no hits. Jalen Johnson. They draft like six options. That's yeah, it's, that's their it's awful because draft. they're always chasing a wing and shooting. Yeah. And they also so like they, to be fair, where they where they end up finishing the past couple seasons, they've always kind of been in like that purgatory um place where they don't finish low enough to get a high pick and they don't finish high enough to, you know, say that they had a good season. So except for that one time they went to the Eastern Conference Finals. You know, they did a pretty good job then, but that was five, six years back, something like that. So it's it's been it's been a while. Yeah. They're tough, dude. They they're not gonna they're gonna fuck this up, you're right. God, they're gonna I can't wait to see how they fuck it up. I'm genuinely excited. You sick fuck, dude. I, dude, I don't know. I just get a kick out of it for some reason. I think the Atlanta Hawks organization, or their organization, is just so stupid. All right, you guys want to call it an episode here? I think that's everything that we have to cover. Uh, the Celtics did yeah. win tonight, so they now they uh, proceed to the Eastern Conference Finals. Fuck yeah. Um, I think they. It's great for them. Um, let's see. I hope the Pacers win this next game so that forces a game seven so the Celtics get even more rest get Porzingis back nice and healthy not that I think they're going to need him in the Eastern Conference Finals I think they can probably beat either team um without him but definitely for the for the finals if they make it past that but that is just the Celtics fan in me um being extremely biased right now I'm nervous for the Nuggets Uh, we gotta see I think the Western Western will be interesting yeah, yeah, we definitely got some time. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. You know, Stay tuned for those new episodes. Uh, I know I'll do a football one next week. Um, I think we all have intentions of, of posting a new one next week. So we'll see how that rolls out. Um, and then website will update hopefully this week or next week. And uh, then you can subscribe to different sports, get updates there. And uh, it should be smooth sailing from there on out so appreciate you guys for bearing with us as we go through this change uh new episodes for um each new podcast will be posted at least the first one or two into this feed and uh you can subscribe to them um clicking a link in that description but for now uh don't forget to like subscribe follow um, and